welcome everyone. I'm excited to introduce you to Uniswap V4 today. This presentation will walk you through the evolution of the Uniswap protocol, focusing particularly on the newest version, V4, and its groundbreaking features. I'm Ant, I'm a developer ambassador of the Uniswap Foundation, and I help out with developer support and integrations for the Uniswap Foundation. Some of my responsibilities include supporting developers to build on Uniswap V4 and Unichain, educating the community about the protocol's capabilities, facilitating connections between builders and resources, and so on. My background is in smart contract and software development, and I've been involved with Uniswap since the Hawk Incubator program first launched. If you have any questions about this presentation, feel free to reach out to me in the Uniswap Discord. Before we dive into the technical aspects, I want, you, I want to introduce you to the Uniswap Foundation. What is the Uniswap Foundation? A question I'll answer for you now. The Uniswap Foundation was created to support the growth, decentralization, and sustainability of the Uniswap community. Our mission is to pursue a more open and fair financial system. Through grants, we drive value in five key focus areas. First, protocol and innovation. We want to develop new core infrastructure and growth strategies that create value for both the Uniswap and the broader DeFi community. Second, developers. We want to onboard new developers to build on the Uniswap protocol and support them throughout the development life cycle. Third, governance. We want to empower Uniswap governance to support protocol growth and to sustain itself. Fourth, research. We want to see DeFi research and its practical implementations. Final one is the security. We want to protect the protocol's users through investment into security. Let's now talk about the Uniswap protocol. The Uniswap protocol is a peer-to-peer -peer system designed for exchanging cryptocurrencies, specifically ERC20 tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. The protocol is implemented as a set of persistent, non-upgradable smart contracts, and to design, it is designed to prioritize sensitive resistance, security, self-custody, and the function without any trusted intermediaries. Now, let's take a look at how the Uniswap protocol has evolved over time. This context is important for understanding the significance of the V4 release. Here is a brief comparison between different versions of Uniswap. We can see it introduced better token support and capital efficiency over time. Uniswap V2, released in 2020, was a major improvement over V1. It supported direct ERC20 to ERC20 swaps and used a global constant product curve. It had a fixed fee structure of 0.3% and used a factory contract to deploy pair contracts for any two ERC20 tokens. However, it didn't support on-chain programmability. Uniswap V3, released in 2021, introduced concentrated liquidity with its price curve segmented into price takes and ranges. This allowed for more capital efficiency. It offered multiple fee tiers but still used the factory contract deployment model and lack on-chain programmability. Now, Uniswap V4, scheduled for release in 2025, represents a significant paradigm shift. It supports both ERC20 to ERC20 and native ETH to ERC20 trading pairs. It introduces programmable AMM curves, dynamic fee across an infinite fee spectrum, and most importantly, a singleton architecture. The key innovation is on-chain programmability through hooks, which can run custom logic at various lifecycle events. Let's explore the architecture of Uniswap V4. The core design philosophy of Uniswap V4 is flexibility through modularization. It's designed to be maximally flexible with each lifecycle event, such as before or after swap, before or after adding liquidity, and so on. The, this model approach allows developers to create customized trading experience while maintaining the core security and reliability that the Uniswap is known for. A major architecture change in V4 is the move to a singleton design pattern. In previous versions, each trading pair required a separate deploy contract. With V4, all pool states are managed by a single pool manager contract. On the right side of this slide, you can see the comparison between V3 and V4 architectures. In V3, to swap ETH for DAI, your transaction will need to go through multiple pair contracts, potentially ETH to USDC and, US and then USDC to DAI. 
in v4 with this single term architecture or pools exist within the same contract allowing for more efficient routing and significantly reduce the pool deployment cost all pool state and logic are encapsulated within the pool manager contract which streamlines interactions and improves gas efficiency and that's awesome to have one contract for all pools another significant innovation in v4 is flash accounting but what exactly is this? In previous versions of Uniswap, every time a swap was made, tokens were transferred between pool contracts for intermediate steps, which was expensive in terms of gas. But with v flash accounting, each balance changing operation, for example like swaps and liquidity modifications, updates an internal net balance known as delta. Only final balance changes require actual token transfers. Here's a concrete example. Imagine you have 20 USDC and 20 USDT, but you want to add liquidity with just 15 USDC and 25 USDT. In previous versions, this, was, this would require multiple external calls as tokens were transferred between pool, con pool contracts when swapping from USDC to USDT. But with v flash accounting, we only need to track the delta. Thus, we, need, we can swap and modify liquidity in a single call and only the final balance changes in for to actual token transfers. As shown in this diagram, when we swap 5 USDC and 5 USDT to create the desired liquidity position, no token transfers occur between these operations. The final state after all operations is what gets settled. The benefits of flash accounting are substantial. Looking at these transaction examples, you can see the dramatic difference in that gas cost between V3 and V4. For similar operations, V3 cost $57.42 in gas, while V4 costs only $4.63, a reduction of over 90%. This efficiency isn't just a technical improvement, it translates directly to better returns for LP. As Hayden Adams, the founder of Uniswap, noted on Twitter, USDC slash USDT on V4 is currently higher returns than V3, even at a tiny fraction of the TVL Lower gas cost is more profitable with LP, and these benefits will compound as V4 scales up. One way V4 improves gas efficiency is also through the implementation of ERC-6909, a minimum and gas efficient standard for managing multiple ERC-20 tokens from a single contract. It provides a simplified alternative to the more complex ERC-1155 multi-token standard. Here's how it works. Instead of choosing to move tokens in and out of the pool manager, developers can choose to opt in and lift the ERC-20 tokens within the pool manager contract. And in exchange, pool manager mint them and ERC-6909 token, representing this claim. In subsequent interactions requiring paying tokens, the users will not need to transfer ERC-20 tokens into the pool manager, and instead they can simply burn some or all of the claim tokens that they have. Now let's get to what argu arguably the most exciting part of Uniswap V4, hooks. Hooks in Uniswap V4 represents a modular approach to building on-chain functionality. Instead of requiring developers to fork the entire protocol to add custom features, hooks allow them to simply attach their custom logic to specific lifecycle events. And as the co-founder of uh, Arakis Finance, uh, Cassandra Dog Yif said, uh, what's fascinating about V4 is its expressibility through hooks. The question becomes not what could be a V4 hook, but rather what couldn't be a V4 hook. Here are some key concepts for hooks. First, hook is pool specific. Each, each liquidity pool in Uniswap V4 can have its own hook contract attached to it, and they will be called by the pool manager. But they are also optional for V4 pools. And then the hook contract is specified when creating a new pool in the pool manager initialize function. Also, you can see hooks as a plug and play modules that can be attached to different stages of a life cycle. For example, before or after you initialize, before or after swap, etc. etc. Hooks can be also categorized into four main types. First, LP profitabilities. These use dynamic fees or auctions to reward LPs or hooks that we hypothecate liquidity to maximize returns. Second, liquidity death hooks. These hooks implement value redistribution to reward liquidity death with the goal of directly deepening liquidity. Third, 
asset class support hooks. This hook supports sophisticated asset classes by tightly coupling full design with asset tokenomics. Fourth is the quality of life kind of hooks. This hooks implement features like limit orders, time rated average market maker, and manipulation resistant oracles. Let's explore some concrete examples of hooks that are already being developed. We can see that Arrakis developed leveraging hooks to create deep on-chain liquidity and recapture map for LPs. Bunny builds a rehab vocation hook to amplify returns by combining steady APYs from landing folds with spot fees. Sorella developed a hook called OnStorm to minimize ramp loss on the Uniswap protocol. Launch is a new approach to coin launches by redistributing 100% of the spot fees to creators and their communities higher V4 hooks. Let's also explore some ideas of hooks that you can build for this hackathon. First is the dynamic fee hook. It automatically adjusts swap fees based on market conditions and to optimize fee generation and liquidity utilization. This hook can be made customizable to specific asset pairs and types as well. Second is the Oracle hooks. It can enable custom or novel price feeds by recording data, for example, time rated average price for integration with the other DeFi protocols. Third can be auto hedging hook. It protects this LP from in IL through automated hedging strategies. And also we have permissioned pool hook. It enables compliant hooks for institutions by allowing for arbitrary rules and logic to affect pool behavior, such as restricting pool access to participants based on KYC or geo allocation status. Now that you understand what Uniswap V4 is bringing to the table, let's, let's talk about how you can get involved. The Uniswap Discord server is the best place to network with other developers, ask questions, and get support for your V4 projects. As you can see from the screenshot, there's an active community discussing hopes, integration challenges, and other technical aspects for the protocol. To stay informed about the latest developments, you can also subscribe to our weekly builders updates newsletter. This provides regular insights into new features, community projects, and upcoming events. You can follow these links shown in the slide to subscribe. We also have this Uniswap Hope Innovative Program. In partnership with AGM Academy, this program provides resources for developers learning to build hooks. They offer educational materials, hackathons, and incubation support for, for, for promising projects. Their hook directory is shown in this screenshot showcase projects built from the Uniswap Hook Incubator. They are currently accepting public hook submissions, so if you are developing a hook, consider submitting the hook to this program. You can also scan the QR code here to access all of these resources and start building on Uniswap V4. While we understand most devs in this program might be intrinsically motivated to join this program, we also want to highlight the benefits of joining a hackathon that we provide this incentive for any developers wanting to build in the new swap before. I hope this presentation has given you a good understanding on the new swap before and its capabilities. And I'm very excited to see what you're going to build with V4. Thank you.